Hello and welcome to Nigeria, the road to 2019, a series of programs where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I'm Charles Anyagul. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, all the news, comment and analysis that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including as the elections come ever closer against the backdrop of conflicts between the executive and the legislature, we talk to one Nigerian member of parliament and leading opposition politician who it can be said fearlessly and defiantly faces down fierce political confrontation with the presidency and the ruling APC party. Senator Enyinai Abaribe is in the house. Now, one of the big problems confronting voters in Nigeria is trying to decide which party belongs to the left or right of the political spectrum. This difficulty applies more directly to members of parliament who are almost impossible to classify in terms of who is fully liberal or conservative, socialist or otherwise, something political theorists call uh, discriminant analysis. So how then do we determine which MP belongs in which category? Well, the only way to do that is by trying to designate them according to their responses to the various issues of the day. By that yardstick, Senator Eyinaya Abaribe, representing Abia South Senatorial District on the platform of the Opposition People's Democratic Party, or PDP, would have to be seen as something of a political maverick, fearlessly and defiantly taking decisions that break the mold of convention, on swerving in his defense of his beliefs, and on flinching in his criticism of what he sees as the excesses and failures of government. As deputy governor of Abia State from 1999 to 2003, he faced down fierce political opposition and they attempted three times to impeach him for his strident views. He subsequently ran for governor but was overpowered by the incumbent Oji Uzo Kalu. Undaunted, Senator Abaribe returned from that defeat and was elected to the Senate in 2007, where he remains to this day. But his time at the upper house of the National Assembly has also been fraught with uh, confrontation and controversy, not least his recent arrest by state security operatives for his alleged links to the proscribed group known as the Indigenous People of Biafra, or IPOB. He, of course, stood as one of the bail sureties of the IPOB leader, Namdi Kanu, who has since vanished seemingly without trace after the military invaded his home in 2017. So, like him or hate him, you can't help noticing him as one of the most outspoken voices on the Nigerian political scene today. And I'm delighted to say that Senator Enyinaya Abaribe joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to come in. The last time I saw you, as I was saying, you and I were flying in the same plane to London, but here you are now. Um, one Nigerian political analyst described you as one senator that the president doesn't like to see or hear, pick up, perhaps because they fear what you're going to say or do. Is that a fair description? Well, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm not in the president's mind or the mind of um, his advisors, but I'm pretty certain that they will take me serious because I don't say things I don't know. And I take my time to look at trends and exactly what is going on. And I put it out as I see it. Well, you've had some very public disagreements with the Buhari government. Recently, you said that the federal government 
or certainly you were amongst a group of people who said the federal government had failed the southeast zone with regard to the implementation of capital projects, something they dispute. And to disprove your points, they've listed at least 69 projects that are ongoing in that zone, including major motorways like the Enugu Port Harcourt Highway, Onicha Enugu Expressway, and lots of others, including Second Niger Bridge, etc. And they insist that if the previous government PDP government, which is your party, had done half of what the APC is doing now in the southeast. No one, least of your, uh, least of all yourself, would be complaining. Well, the point really is that they are being disingenuous, and I, we can prove it. When somebody brings something out and tells you, we have these projects that are ongoing. Of course, they've been ongoing since the time of the PDP. All that we looked at was to take the 2017 implementation of what is in the budget. Mm. And this was not done by us. It was done by an independent agency, the Institute of Development Studies of the University of Nigeria and Soka. And that institute conducted a study. They have it is printed to say if you budgeted 100 Naira today, at the end of the period of the 2017 budget, how much did you spend? And what we found was that it was way, way below 19%. And the facts are there. And is that specific to that zone, or, or is that a general problem with the implementation of the budget, which, as we all know, is never fully implemented? Of in course, it, it's uh, most likely a general problem of the implementation of the budget. Right. But we are focused on the southeast. And if it was not something that was done by an outside agency, if it was something that I just came out and said, mm. of course they will have had reason to say so. It is because it's an election year, so right. they, they started thinking, oh, that it's um, uh, politics. It's not politics. It, the, the facts are there. Right. And there's a booklet. It's been done. We brought it out. And it was funded, interestingly, also by a foreign agency too, who we are all working towards making mm -hmm. sure that the budgets work. Understood. So, now, yeah. you currently, uh, Senator Abaribe, represent Abia South Senatorial Zone in Abia State on the platform of the PDP. But other aspirants have expressed interest in contesting against you for that seat. And these are people inside your party, the PDP. One of their arguments is that you come from Obingwa local government, which is the same council area the governor of Abia State, Okezie Ibazu, comes from. Do they have a point that in the interest of fairness, that shoot seat should move to another part of the state to ensure balance and equitable representation? No, when people went to want to make a political argument, they can say anything. But the point really is that, is this. A, an, in the executive, you have time limits. In the legislature, you don't have term limits. Right. And because you don't have term limits, it now depends on whether you're effective where you are right. or you're not effective where you are. And whether you actually are representing your people or you're not representing your people. It is these people that will make that determination. But when somebody wants to run, of mm. course, he's going to come up with this type of um, uh, stories. And the, the question you ask them is this. At the point at which we were trying to get an executive, because the previous executive, I, I was already in the Senate. Mm. Uh -huh. So why didn't that argument come up then? Yeah, but it's come up now. Uh, so what do I do about the argument? We leave the people to make that decision. Well, so you're going to run again? Of course. Right. Okay. Well, the reason I ask that question is that it brings me to the contentious issue of zoning on a national level because your party the pdp has of course zoned the 2019 presidential slot to the north do, do you support that move of course I, i've told you this the executive arm by the constitution right 
is has term limits and my party of course if you want to win you got to design all your templates right. that you're going to use to win because i ask you that yes. uh, because that situation is similar to what you're being asked to no, do that, that, with that, your it's, senatorial it's seat it's not at all it's a very different thing the point i hasten to repeat is that in the legislature there is no term limit so the executive can move the legislature can always stay there. That is why McCain, that you're, I, I, I saw you're running everything about him, has been there for six terms, mm. 36 years. Uh, nobody from his area said he wasn't uh, doing well for them. Yeah, but the, the contexts are totally different. I mean, yeah, the, Niger yeah. the Nigerian context, which is why I use the example of the, 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 on the national level, your party zoning it to the north. The, the political calculations in Nigeria are different from that of the United States. Now, what you're saying in effect, if I get you right, when you say the context is different, well, it is, different. is that what you're saying is that the uh, experience doesn't matter. Well, in, in, you, in don't, you don't need to. No, no, no. You, that's, you that's need to continue changing. No, that is most <laughs> definitely <laughs> what, what I'm saying. What I'm saying, you're going to. What, what I'm saying yes. is that the, in an ideal world, meritocracy is what should always prevail. Precisely. But the Nigerian circumstance, given its unique history and politics, is not. The, the last ideal. president of PDP extraction right. came from the South. So it's axiomatic that the next president of PDP extraction will want to take it to the right. north, okay. the whole of the north. So I don't see where you know there's any right. di okay. well, difficulty let's, let, there. Let's leave that because I've got much more interesting things that I want to talk about. Let's move on to the vexatious uh, issue of that siege on Parliament by the Department of State Security a few weeks ago. Are you any clearer as a senator and high-ranking member of the National Assembly as to why heavily armed security police wearing those rather sinister looking masks to cover their faces laid siege to the National Assembly? Of course we know what the outcome they wanted to get that day. The outcome was fairly simple. All they wanted to do was to prevent PDP senators from being in the uh, area, allow APC senators to go in, mm. and then effect an illegal change of the leadership of the National Assembly. That's exactly all they wanted to achieve. It failed. And of course, uh, the person who orchestrated it all uh, had to pay the price. That's the head, the, DSS, the head of the DSS, uh, Lawal yes. Daura. And you yeah. yourself were detained by Mr. Lawal Daura when he was DSS head. J just very quickly, tell us the circumstances under which you were nicked, because we're going to take a short break. Well, uh, he, he took me in because I was criticizing the president. Is that not, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that you were connected to IPOB, the in, in, indigenous people of Biafra movement? Well, I had been connected to IPOB since 2017 when I took uh, the, uh, the leader on right. bail. And so from 2017 to late 2018, more than a year. So you want to ask yourself, why would he leave me all that while and then come today to say we are holding you because of IPOB? No. It's just because I was a trenchant critic of the government. And um, the, this government, this particular government, has been doing a series of things that is leading to an autocracy. And we are seeing all the things happening every day. OK. Well, I'll tell you what. Stay with us, because I'd like to obviously chat with you some more. You're watching Nigeria, the road to 2019. Plenty more still ahead, including as we continue our dialogue with Senator Eyinaya Abaribe. We turn the focus on his alleged relationship with the prescribed and some say secessionist group IPOB and its leader, Namdi Kanu. Stay with us. <laughs> 